I'm still on, going to be sharing about uh, the covenant. Uh, look, honestly, this, this came out of one scripture that I, that I read and uh, I just can't get away from it. I think it's very, very important for us to uh, realise what, um, what's available to us. So let me just, uh, just go over a little bit of a background. Uh, the, I, I just want to say, let God's word uh, live big in us. You know, the word of God is, our, is, is everything to us, isn't it? We've got to know the word. We've got to know what God says. Otherwise, the devil will, will uh, you know, challenge us and come against us. See, if I can say this, it's great to know the word of God, but it's also more important that we allow the illumination and the truth of the, what God is really saying to hit us. If you remember, right, right in the very beginning of time, God said to Adam and Eve, don't eat of that tree. Now, they had the word from God, directly from God. When Satan came and challenged her, Eve actually quoted the word of God. But then the devil said to Eve, no, that's not what God meant. And this is where we've got to be so careful is that we might even know what God says, but do we really know what He means? Do we really know what He means? Do you know that when He said that you're forgiven, that you are forgiven? <laughs> because the devil doesn't want you to believe that you're forgiven. He wants you to still think that you're in bondage. He still wants you to think that you're, you know, you're, the, you're that old person you used to be, but we're not, we're new creations, amen? We're brand new people. And so it's very, very important that we have the Spirit of God on, what God, what, on the Word. We've got to be able to, uh, be able to interpret what God is saying, not allow our emotions to uh, dictate or try to tell us what God said, but allow the Word of God to speak for itself. Let God's Word be big in you. In Colossians 3.16, it says, let the, word of God, let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Let God's Word... Uh, spoken by Christ the Messiah, have its home in your hearts and in your minds and dwell in you in all riches. What does that mean? You know, I, I believe that, you, you know, God wants to establish His Word in us. In other words, He wants all of the benefits of what He has done for us and what He has given to us to be actually in our lives, uh, working in us, working through us. He wants us to... Uh, to receive everything that He's done for us. The enemy does not want us to do that. He doesn't want us to live in freedom. He wants us to live in bondage. He wants us to, to still think that we're unworthy. He still wants us to think that we can't make it. Remember I, I spoke about in Proverbs 3, 5, it says, Trust in the Lord uh, with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in every way acknowledge Him. If we lean to our own understanding, our own understanding will tell us that we're not worthy, we're not good enough, we're not this, we're not that. But God in His Word is trying to tell us that we are, if we can receive it by faith. Uh, in all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path, otherwise He'll make it smooth. Uh, we've got to know that all things work together for good for those that love Him. Galatians 3, 14 and 15. And this is where, where I, I started to spring off this. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. God is speaking here, obviously, about an old covenant relationship that he had. A covenant that said, with blessing, I will bless you. With covenant that said, I will look after you. I will be your God. I will be your father. You will be my children. I, I believe that God wants us to understand this. You see, the word of God, this word is a window. The word is a window that we can look into. It's something that we can see what God has made available for us. You ever been around to a display home and it's all locked up? So you look through the windows and you start having a look to see what's in there. And the Bible is a window that we can look into to show us what God has actually done for us and what He has made available to us and what He's made available for us, what we can, what we can claim, what we can grab a hold of, what we can live by. 
We can, we can see that, it, we're, that we're forgiven, we're justified, we're, we've been cleansed, we've been washed, we're joint heirs. As, 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 as uh, Troy was saying today, that we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We are more than conquerors. We, he, we, we can tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the works of Satan and nothing shall by any means hurt us. We've got to understand that we can stand on the Word of God. And this window, as we read it, as we look at it, it starts to come alive to us. If you remember, there was, you know, Jesus came to his disciples and he said, who do men say that I the son of man am? And of course, the disciples said what people were saying, what they thought, what they felt. Lean not to your own understanding, but in every way acknowledge him. Look in through the window and really find out what God says about himself, what God says about the church in these last days that we're living in, what God says we're going to do, amen. We're going to triumph. We're going to drive out the inhabitants. We're going to drive out the evil forces. We're going to, you know, we're going to break that thing's neck. And he said, but who do you say that I am? And they said, oh, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're one of the great prophets. That must, that'll please you. That'll make you happy. But then Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? And of course, Peter stood up and he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus spoke to him and he said, blessed are you, Simon, for Jonah, because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. In other words, your own understanding has not revealed this to you. What people are saying is not revealed this to you. What people are saying will keep you down and keep you under. But I want you to understand that what came out of your mouth now was not flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven, he has built, he has revealed this to you. You are the Christ. I want to tell you that those words would be echoing through the chambers of, of glory. It would be echoing all over throughout the, the, the kingdom of God, the angels in heaven and everything like that would say, somebody down there has finally got it. Somebody down there understands who he really is and what he's about. He's not just a good man. He's not just the headache clear, curer. He's not just the, the one that's going to heal their body. He's the one that's going to deliver them. He's the one that's going to set them free. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. That's an amazing thing. And then he said, hey, I'm going to build my church upon this rock. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Friend, I want to tell you, we've got to understand that we need a revelation. We need, a, we need an understanding. We, we need to understand that God is for us and not against us. If God be for me, who can be against me? God wants to raise us up on this last day. He wants to raise up a great army, an exceeding great army. And God wants to pour out upon us the blessing the blessing that, uh, of Abraham, the blessing, whatever, whatever he wants. He wants to open our eyes. I think we already heard that today through the prophetic, that God wants to open our eyes, wants us to see, wants us to be able to see really what God has made for us. The blessing that Christ brought uh, through his death. You know, sometimes we can look at it as, as a failure, but no, it was a blessing, amen. Amen. If the Bible says if the devil would have known what he was doing, he would never have crucified the Christ. Jesus, the Word of God says, for the joy that was set before him, he saw something that, that nobody else saw. He saw something that the Father had told him. He saw something that, that nobody else understood. He saw a generation of people that would triumph over the devil. Amen. He saw a bunch of people that would rise up and know their God and know who they are. God truly is seeking a people today that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. He's looking for a bunch of people that will break out of the natural into the supernatural. He's looking for a bunch of people there that will know God and know the power of His resurrection. Know what it is that you've been endured with power from on high. We're not just a bunch of tongue talkers. We've been endured with power from on high. Amen. We're not just tongue talkers. We have been endured with power from on high. Amen. Not something that you can conjure up. Not something that Global Connection us have or the AOG or the DOG or some other G. <laughs> it is something that came from heaven. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. On that great day, there was an outpouring of the Spirit of God and tongues of fire came upon them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were endured with power from on high. They rose up and they triumphed over the enemy. They started, not only was there one now on the cross that was risen from the dead, now there's 120 of them risen from the dead. The next day, there's over 300. A couple of days later, there's over 5,000. 
And I I want to tell you today that there's literally millions upon millions upon millions of people that have been filled with the Holy Spirit. God is gathering His army, amen. He's preparing a people for war in Jesus' name. We are not here playing lollipops. We are not here just playing tiddlywinks. We are the church of the living God. The church on fire, amen. Turn to somebody and say, on fire. (laughs) On fire, 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 fire. So the blessing that Christ brought through His death is the new covenant, a better covenant that the Gentiles might receive uh, as they receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour. That's the entrance for us today. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ. Today we've got a high priest. How many people are glad about that? <laughs> we've got a high priest that's, that's, that he cries out, it is finished. <laughs> We've got a high priest today that's sitting right beside the Heavenly Father where we're sitting today too, and Him, by faith we are. Whose blood cries out, it is finished. I have conquered hell and death once and for all. Amen? Once and for all, once and for all. Who intercedes for us today. He's up there interceding for us. He's up there today saying, come on, Father, pour it out. Come on, Dad. Come on, they're they're, they're having a go down there. Come on, come on, let's do it. I I believe that he's there. He's believing that God will set us free. He's interceding for us. And if we sin, if we sin, not when we sin deliberately or continually sinning, when we sin and confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Amen? What an amazing thing. As Primrose was praying today, as she was interceding and as she was, as she was praying and as she was, you know, just praying for her and confessing and, and friend, we've got to humble ourselves. We, we, we're not oity toities We're not untouchables. We've got, to, we, we're, we've got to humble ourselves. We've got to get on our faces and before God. We start to cry out, cry out to God, God, forgive me. What is sin? I think the church has lost its understanding of what sin really is. And we just live like the world. I don't think that there's much difference between the church now and the world. Very quiet here today. I didn't hear one amen. The Bible says be separate and come out from among them. Amen? Be separate. Come out. Come out. Come out, you foul devil. No. God said to Israel, I am the Lord that heals you. Then he promised them none of the diseases of the Egyptians would come upon them. I want to read uh, in Psalm 103. I believe that we've got to remind ourselves. Uh, This Psalm, I, I read it constantly. It's got to remind me. I've got to, I've got to get a hold of it so as that I can understand what God has really done for me through Jesus Christ. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. I long for the day when we really get free. I long for the day. Primrose often says to me, I wanted to dance. I said, why didn't you? (laughs) You see, freedom is so important to us, to be free. I long for the day when everything within me will praise the Lord. Amen. When I will halal. I I tried it the other day and I almost fainted. (laughs) Vertigo or something, I call it, I think. When everything within us will get out and dance and shout and give glory to God. Amen. But we are locked up in this house called the flesh. How many people really want to get delivered from the, the stinking flesh? Come on, lift up your hands if you do. Come on, let's ask God, hey, deliver us. Deliver us from this body of flesh that, that we can be part of what you want to do. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and everything within me. Bless His holy name. You got arthritis? We'll tell arthritis to bless God. <laughs> Amen. If there's a demon in there, we'll say, come on, we're going to bless God today. (laughs) He won't stay around long. (laughs) 
Amen? He'll get out quick. Amen? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of His benefits, who forgives all your iniquities. All in the Greek means all. <laughs> you can't do much with a three-lettered word. <laughs> The theologians, whatever you want, the unbelievers, the doubters, what you can't do much with that. It means all. I have been delivered. I am free. Turn to somebody and say, I am delivered. I am free. All of my iniquities, all of them are gone. They're gone. They're gone. All of them are gone in Jesus' name. They're gone. Far as from the east as to the west, from the north to the south, they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. It's like my little dog. She got out. She was gone. <laughs> she didn't wait around. She went. Glory to God. Who forgives all my iniquity. Who heals all your diseases. Come on, turn to somebody and say, I'm healed. I'm healed. I am healed. I am healed in Jesus' name. I am healed. Come on. Hey, how many people are having trouble saying that? Because what's saying your, your pain, your arthritis, your whatever it might be is saying, hey, I'm still here, boy. <laughs> but if you talk to that enough, if you speak to that situation enough, you get down there on your, and, and look at that whatever, and I don't have a problem with my knee, by the way. <laughs> but if you get hold of your knee and you look, if you've got pain and, and you say knee, knee, you are healed in Jesus' name. Speak to it. Speak to the mountain and they will be removed. Don't just have to, you, you can do it while you're rubbing on the, whatever you call it, <laughs> the stuff. What do you call that stuff? Who? I'm getting some, I'm getting some feedback now. <laughs> all the Denka rubbers, put up your hand. All the Voltarans, put up your hand. All the, <laughs> come on, you can be, in Jesus' name you are healed. You must go. You must go. Why? Because the Word of God said, Jesus has healed all of my diseases. All of them. They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. And we can live in that abundant life. We can live in that victory life. But if we don't recognize it, if we don't understand the covenant, we don't understand that God is not a man that He should lie, neither the Son of Man that He should repent. Has He not said it? Will He not bring it to pass? And don't doubt in your heart, but believe and put your trust in Him. Trust and obey because there's no other way. We've got to somehow or other stand. And I want to tell you, I believe that God is going to do a restoration work in our lives where we won't be reliant on doctors, but we will be reliant on the Word of God and we will stand on the Word of God and we will speak the Word of God and the Word of God will come to pass. It will truly come to pass. Amen. It has to come to pass. It has to come. It has to come to pass. Turn to somebody and say, it has to come to pass. It must come to pass. God said it, that settles it, it's done. We must agree, we've got to agree with the Word of God. The doctors say, you got this? Well, praise God, you may have it. But I want to tell you, Jesus said, by my stripes you're healed. Thank you for the information. <laughs> I often say, when the enemy... You know, when, when, when that thing comes at you in your head and, and, and the enemy says you've missed it or you're no good, you're, you'll never make it, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that, you're a failure, you're all that, all that sort of junk that comes into your mind, you've got to somehow or other turn it around and you've got to say, thank you, devil. You are the father of lies. You cannot tell the truth. So if you're telling me I can, can't make it, that means I'm going to make it. <laughs> You catch my drift. Turn it. Turn it on him. Oh, he hates it. Give him, give him, give him, give him migraines. <laughs> Send him to the dispensary. <laughs> or whatever. Heals all your diseases, redeems your life from destruction. Glory to God. 
Just look at what God says, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Come on, people over 60s here, under 60, you're in the youth group in this church. <laughs> Come on, let's rise up. Let's, let's flap our wings, amen. Flap your gums. <laughs> do whatever you gotta do, amen. Come on, rise up. Start believing God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Your own understanding says you're over, you're finished. No, it's not over till you're dead. Don't die till you're dead. Might as well live a little. <laughs> Might as well slap him up the side of the head of it. Might as well have a go. You never know. You might win. I believe in the resurrection. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe that He's coming back. Amen. I believe that He's coming back. I want to tell you He's not coming back for the church that we see today because if He came back for the church that He sees today, He would be unequally yoked. He's come back for church with faith that have risen up and smashed the gates of hell. He's coming back for you and me. Shaka bundi. Come on. Oh. What's that song go? What's that song go? Uh, <laughs> I know I'm telling the story begins to burn come on I'm, I'm, I'm getting it something something that church begins to rise what is that how did it go the church trying oh shaka bundi we've got a lot of them here but something about begins to stir begins to stir everybody start to stir a little bit Come on, just start to stir a little bit. Ooh, so, come on, start to stir a little bit. It begins to stir. I want to tell you, I want to frighten, I don't know about, I, this is the wrong phrase, but I want to frighten hell out of the devil. <laughs> hey? Wrong, strong, but anyhow, you know what I mean? I want to give him a fright when they begin to stir, when you get up in the morning and say, oh, good Lord, morning. No, it's good morning, Lord. <laughs> The sleeping giant called the church is awakened by the fire, begins to stir. Uh, yeah, I'll get out while I can. I, I got that. <laughs> so your youth is renewed like the eagles. Because of the covenant God, he was and is under obligation to shield Israel from their enemies. Wouldn't it be great today if we could start to stand up there and say, I have a covenant relationship with my Saviour, Jesus Christ, with my Heavenly Father. And Lord, that covenant is a better covenant than the old covenant. And in the old covenant, you promised to shield them from their enemies. And Lord, I'm being attacked I'm being attacked by the enemy and right now I stand my ground. I put my hand up into your hand and today I claim that every enemy will be put to flight. Every enemy will be driven back in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am not a slave to sin. I am not a slave to the enemy. I am triumphed over him in it. I am a conqueror more than a conqueror. I stand my ground and I claim the covenant relationship that I have with you, Jesus. I love you with all my heart. I'm doing my my best, my God. I'm trying my best. I'm loving on you, God. I love you with all my heart. I just want to worship you. I want to honour you. I want to respect you. But also, Lord, I don't want to be down here flopping around like an old dead mullet. I want to rise up like the eagle in Jesus' name. I want my youth to be renewed. I want to be restored in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to claim every promise that you've given to me. God, I'm claiming right now that you will destroy every enemy that comes against us in Jesus' name. And if you'll come into agreement with that, can I hear an amen? amen. 
Sure, there are afflictions. Sure, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Don't just base yourself on that because read on it says, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. That word all again means all. It just doesn't mean the little ones. It means all. A weapon formed against us can prosper. That's what God says. Amen. That's what God says. Glory to God. I'm having fun here. To shield us from our enemies, to see that our land brought forth large crops, to see that the herds uh, and their flocks uh, multiplied. The hand of God was upon them in blessing, in blessing, blessing, blessing. How many people want the blessing of God? Jerusalem became the richest city in the world because of the blessing of God. There was no city like it, no nation like it. God was their God and they were God's covenant people. That's what God wants for the church today. That's what He wants for you today. He wants you to have the greatest, if you're in business, He wants you to make a fortune, amen. If your marriage, He wants your marriage to be the best marriage in town. But I want to tell you, friends, you know, if you just sit around twiddling your thumbs and say, well, God, you you promised to bless it. And so I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm just going to sit here and wait for your blessing. How many people knows nothing happens? The Bible says if you don't work, you don't deserve to eat. Friend, you've got to work hard at a business to make it work, but it will work in Jesus' name. You've got to work hard at a marriage today if you want your marriage to succeed. Amen. You've got to work hard with your children if you want your children to follow you into Christ. You've got to work hard because there's enemies out there that are out there to try to destroy your business, try to destroy your marriages, try to destroy your families, try to destroy everything that God represents in your life. So as that we in the world look no different. God's going to do something, I believe, so tremendous in the church. He's going to help us. There were a covenant people under the covenant, one man could chase a hundred, a, a thousand. One shall put to flight one thousand, two shall put to flight ten thousand. These were covenant keeping people. When God raised up King David, he truly had a covenant king. How would it be if God raised up a church that was truly a covenant church? Oh, how would it be if God could raise up a church that was truly a covenant church? You see, he was a covenant king and he had covenant warriors. One warrior could, could destroy over 800 men in one battle. What an amazing thing. Why? Because they were covenant keeping. God, God was watching over them. We hear of the mighty men of, of David, how, how, how they were in battle. Friend, we are in war. This is not a game that we're playing. We're not playing a game called church. There is a war going on. There's a war raging, hallelujah. But I want to tell you the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down the strongholds. And some of the strongholds he speaks about is casting down imaginations and thoughts and everything that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. And friend, I want to tell you, your greatest battle is not the devil. Your battle is between your ears and how you think about yourself and how you think about the church and how you think about this and how you think about those sort of things. Friend, we've got to rise up and we've got to come into a covenant relationship with our God and we've got to declare it. God, this is not just a phrase, but this is a reality. Greater is He who is in me than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Quitting is a permanent response to a temporary problem. Never quit, amen. Covenant relationship, a covenant God. They, they did so many things. In a single, they, without weapons, they killed a lion. They, they possessed physical strength and powers. They were God's peculiar people. It all had to do with the anointing. Everybody say the anointing. There's one thing we don't understand. We say it a lot, but we really don't understand the anointing. Jesus stood in the midst of a, of a church and He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God has anointed me. 
He has empowered me. I was at a meeting recently with uh, Inspire. There's about, I don't know, 20 or 30 people in a, in, a, in a meeting there. And they asked me if I'd share. And I had a little preach. But at the end of that meeting, I can't describe it. But a tangible presence of a living God came into that building. I, I, I am gobsmacked right now because I cannot describe it. Sue, she couldn't describe it. She didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. So we didn't do anything. <laughs> we just let God do. Just let God do. Because God is very interested in you. We've got to have time in this place. We've got to make time to allow God to come into our lives, to allow God to, to get around us and, and, and reveal, revealer of truth. You know, the Holy Spirit here is wanting to reveal truth to us, wanting to reveal all the, the things. And it's the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. You know, there isn't a more tragic event in human history than the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. The wealthiest, most powerful God covenant people. They got carried away into Babylon because they sinned against the covenant. And I've got a question today to ask. Where is the church today? Where are we today? I, I, want to, I, I want to draw and gather us again just under the unction, under the banner. Let God be God. Let God build His house, amen? amen. Let God restore. Let God get into our, around our lives. Let, let the anointing get around your life. Let the anointing get around your life. Let me say it again. Let the anointing get around your life. It will do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever imagine or think. Let that anointing change your life. It's the anointing that will change the life. This great city, this great nation, this great, great people, they broke the covenant. I believe that today if we could stand as a church, and ask God to forgive us and help us to find the way back, amen, under the spout where the glory comes out. You know, it's very, very easy at times to misinterpret when we read the Bible. I've been a little bit heavy today, so I'm going to start do something a little bit softer right now. A little boy went to Sunday school. When he came out, his mother said, what did you learn today? And uh, the little boy said, don't be afraid, you'll get your quilt. He said, what? Don't be afraid, you'll get the quilt. The quilt is coming. Anyhow, that afternoon, the pastor came and had a cup of tea with the mother and and the family, and she said, what was the Sunday school lesson about today? Oh, I said, don't be afraid, your comforter is coming. <laughs> Sometimes God speaks to us and we misunderstand what he says. We've got to make sure we understand. Amen? We've got to understand. So let's stand up today. Father, Help us find the way. Help us find the way. Let us find the way into, under this, that Shekinah glory. Help us find the way, my God. Help us find the way. Father, we repent today for where we've been slack. 
where we've not listened and not obeyed. And, but Lord, we, we really want to see the church in victory. The sleeping giant called the church is awakened by the fire. It begins to stir. It begins to move. It starts to stand up. Can these bones live? Bible speaks plainly. God says prophesy. Prophesy and speak, call the four winds to come. And those four winds started to, as they came, they, the bones started to come together. Lord, as a church, we're asking you for us to come together. You've established a group of people here with all different giftings, all different ideas, all, all, all different, but my God, we're part of one body. And I'm asking you today in Jesus' name that you'll help us. Help me find the way.